Good morning. God bless you this morning. And God keep you this morning. Thank you for tuning on me once again. Praise God. I thank God my church is not closed. Hallelujah. The church is in me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hearing about all these churches closed this morning due to the weather. Praise God. They need to tune on to YouTube. Still have their church on YouTube, Facebook, or something. Praise God. Don't let the building stop them from talking about the word of God. They show not going to stop me from talking about the word of God. Amen. Praise God. And I'm glad to be here. I'm glad that God woke me up this morning. I hope and I'm praying that you is glad and you is being thankful and thanking God that he woke you up this morning too, as well as every day. Praise God. I want to um, share with you reading. Um, I'm going to read out of Luke chapter 18. I'm going uh, to read about the parable of the persistent widow. The parable of the persistent widow. Luke chapter 18. It says, uh, One day Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. The Bible said people pray to be like expecting God and want God to hurry up and do some things for them. You know, and then things don't happen right away for them. They want to give up. You know, they want to do it. They do it their way. They do it their way. They may mess up some things, you know, instead of just being patient. It's waiting. But they want to just give up instead of waiting. It says, uh, there was a judge in a certain city, he said, who ne who, who never, he says, who never, he says, who neither, who neither feared God nor care about people. A widow of that city came to him re Repeatedly saying, give me justice and dispute with my enemies. The judge ignored her for a while. But finally, he said to himself, I don't fear God or care about people. But this woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she is wearing me out with her contents request. And that's also the book of Luke chapter 11, verse 7 through 8. It just, <laughs> I'm just laughing with a smile. It kind of reminds me of, you know, being in a relationship. Or rather be married or not. This woman is driving me crazy. She's wearing me out. You know, do something about her. I'm tired of her. I'm this. I'm that. <laughs> they kind of remind me, you know, you can be going through something in your own life about whether it's a woman or you with a man. You driving me crazy. As I read this, you know, kind of mind of the world and how they talk and what they say. But anyway, verse 6 said, Then the Lord says, Learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a just uh, decision in the end. So don't you think God will surely give justice to this chosen people who cried out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you. He will grant justice to them quickly. But when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on the earth who have faith? And um, verse 9 says, Then Jesus told this story to some who had great confidence in their own righteousness and scorned everyone else. <clears throat> it says, Two men went to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, and the other was a despised tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed this prayer. I thank you, God, that I am not a sinner like everyone else. For I don't cheat, I don't sin, and I don't commit adultery. I'm certainly not like that tax collector. I fast twice a week, and I give you a tenth of my income. But the tax collector stood at the distance and dared not even lift his eyes to heaven as he prayed. Instead, he beat his he beat his chest in sorrow, saying, Oh God, be merciful to me, for I am a sinner. I tell you, this sinner, not the Pharisee, return home justice before God. For those who exalt themselves will be humble, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. And that's also in the book of Luke chapter 14. Verse 11. And the next verse, it talks about Jesus blesses the children. Jesus blesses the children. It says, uh, verse 15, it says, One day some parents brought their little children to Jesus so he could touch and bless them. But when the disciples saw this, they scolded the parent for bothering him. 
Then Jesus called for the children and said to the, to the disciple, Let the children come to me. Don't stop them, for the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like the, you know, who is like the children. He says, I tell you the truth, anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child would never enter it. And that's also in the book of Mark chapter 10 verse 13 to 16 and the next verse you know it talks about the rich man the next verse talks about the rich man verse 18 says once a religious leader asked Jesus this question good teacher what should I do to inherit eternal life why do you call me good Jesus asked him only God is truly good but to answer your question you know the commandment you must not commit adultery you must not murder. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely. Honor your father and mother. It said the man replied, I have obeyed all these commandments since I was young. When Jesus heard this answer, he said, There is still one thing you haven't done. Sell all your possession and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. But when the man heard this is, this is when the man heard this, he became very sad, for he was very rich. Just imagine that if somebody rich and you know, and God speaks, you tell them to do something, you just so selfish, don't want to do it. You so rich, and when you want to, when you tell you to do these things, sell all your stuff and give it to the poor. You rich, you got it. You don't help and share somebody else, and then to come to you to do something, it's like you want to be all sad, I don't want to give, I don't want to do. But you done all these other things that God said not to do. You doing that fine, but when it comes to your own possession, your money and everything, you know He wants you to go out to. Whatever, give to somebody else's life, you got a problem with it, you got an issue with it. I ain't giving them, I work too off with it, I ain't giving them people that, you know, you have an issue with it. So like it says, all the pieces not together. You know, you're not, you have stepping. You know, if I say good and bad, don't make you got to go all the way through. You know, you risk, give it a share to somebody else, help the poor. Praise God. That's what this man did, he said, when Jesus told him to do all these things, you know, it's like he got sad. Like he didn't want to do what he said all of a sudden. Um, he said, when Jesus saw this, he said, how hard it is for the rich to eternal. I said, he, said, he said, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. In fact, it is easier, easier for a camel to go through the eyes of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard this said, those who heard this said, they... He said, then who is the world can be saved? He replied, what is impossible for, what is impossible for people in, he said, he said, he said, he replied, what is impossible for people is possible with God? Peter said, we're left our home to follow you. Yes, Jesus replied, and I assure you that everyone who has given up house or wives, or brother, or parent, or children, for the sake of the kingdom of God, will be repaid many times over in their life, and will have eternal life in the world to come. Then the next verse talks about Jesus again predict, predicts his death. Jesus again predicts his death is what it talks about the next verse, verse 31. It says, taking the twelve disciples aside, Jesus said, listen, we're going up to Jerusalem where all the prediction of the prophets concerning the Son of Man will come true. He will be handed over to the Romans and will be mock treated shamefully, shamefully and spit upon. They will flog him with a wipe and kill him. But on the third day, he will rise again. But they didn't understand any of this. The significance of, the, of his word was hidden from them, and they failed to grasp what he was talking about. You know, next verse, it goes on, talking about Jesus healed a blind man, and, you know, I'm, I'm reading the whole chapter 18, so I might as well just go ahead and read, read Jesus healed a blind man. 
uh, verse uh, 35, it says, As Jesus approached Jericho, the blind beggar was sitting beside the road. When, the, when he heard the noise of a crowd going past, he, he asked, What was happening? They told him that Jesus, the Nazarene, was going by. So he began shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And uh, verse 39 said, Be quiet. The people in front yelled at him, but the only shout louder, Son of David, have mercy on me. When Jesus heard him, he stopped and ordered that the man be brought to him. As the man came near Jesus, you know, came near Jesus, asked him, What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do for you? That's what Jesus asked him. What do you want me to do for you? Lord, he said, I want to see. And Jesus said, all right, receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Instantly, the man could see, and he followed Jesus, praising God. And all who saw it praised God too. Everybody seen him praise God too. Hallelujah. And that's also the book of Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52. I mean, you know, it's like, you know, you know what you want from Jesus. You know what you want from God. You know, you praying, you asking there all these things, you know, and it's like, okay, being versa. Okay, what you going to do for me? Are you going to love me, keep my commandment, you know, help the poor, do what I call to do, do what you need to do, what you need not to do, what I'm telling you to do, you know, I mean, you know, it's. It's like it's easy for me to ask you, okay, what can I do for you? You be real quick. Oh, I need this. I need that. I need my bill. I need money. I need this. You will be real quick on the thing, whatever you need. I need me a good wife. I need me a, a husband. I need a business. I need this. I need that. You know, you'll be really, really quick of telling Jesus what you want. But it's like, okay, what you want? What you, what you, what you think Jesus want? You know, he asking you to do something when you read. He's telling you what to do. Telling you what to not to do. He's telling you. What he want is like why you can't follow him. Why you won't do what he asked you to do. Why you won't do what he called you to do. But it's easy for you to ask him, you know, something, you know, he ain't say he ain't gonna tell you no. Sometimes it may take a little longer, but he ain't gonna tell you no. He ain't gonna, he, I mean, you know, because I know I serve a yes God. Hallelujah. It may not be when you want it, but you know, to be on time. Praise God. No matter how long or whatever, no matter how many years or months or weeks or days it takes. You know, for just when your faith kick in, you're going to have faith and wait and be patient within him or you going to stop or give up because things don't happen as quick the way you expect it to happen or when you want it to happen. Praise God. And then you want to go do things on your own when God said, don't do them things. Don't do it that way. That ain't what I told you to do. You wait and be patient. Then you do these things, you know, to get all this, you know, get involved. Say it's get involved with somebody. It's all messed up. You know, you thought this and you thought that. No, you didn't want to wait. You didn't want to wait. So God will show you who's, who's and who's not who's if you be patient in him and can keep acknowledging him and keep on asking him at the same time. You find a, you know, you're living, you're doing things at the same time. That'll make, that'll mean make a move. <laughs> it's like somebody want to make a move. We want to make a move before time. Don't make a move yet. <laughs> you know, God didn't say to make a move yet. Wait. It's <laughs> like, wait on the Lord. I said, wait. Because I'm doing stuff out of all. I don't do stuff with God. Didn't say, did, uh, if he didn't tell you to do it, don't do stuff. He didn't say, do it. Wait. Be patient. Well, that's why I would say, God, I always know what he's doing all the time. He knows. He can see way past you what you can see and what you can imagine. It's called wait. Wait on the Lord. You want him to do things for you? You really quick and speak minded, quick speak minded on that what you want, but what do he want? You want to be all slow and sad or what he want? You want to take matters in your own hand, but that's not how it works. That's not how it's supposed to work. But I know a lot of us, a lot of people, you know, do it. You know, instead of getting that structure from God, you know, wait. Wait patiently. You know, those that wait, good things come to those that wait. Wait. No matter how long it is, just wait. Praise God. I've been waiting on some stuff too, and I ain't giving up. I ain't stopping. You know, I'm not going to stop, you know, praising God and, and reading the word and praying for even myself and for you all because I want some things that it didn't have happened yet. You know, I'm not going to stop. You know, I mean, the word still has to go on, you know, because looking sad is not going to solve nothing. 
So I'm going to keep on pushing because one of these days it's going to happen because that's what I believe because I got faith. And I hope you got faith in whatever the thing which you ever uh, imagined or haven't uh, received yet and you've been waiting for, you're praying for, whatever it is. Praise God. Wait. Be patient. Wait. God knows what he's doing. And I'm going to read here about uh, loneliness. Season of loneliness. <laughs> Surviving loneliness, season of loneliness. Surviving loneliness, season of loneliness. Surviving loneliness. Uh, <laughs> Joshua chapter. Uh, Joshua chapter. Uh, one verse nine. It says, "Have not I command thee? Be strong. Be strong of a good courage. Be not. It says, be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is." With thee, whether so wherever thou go, wherever you go, God is with you, no matter where you go, state to state, city to city, you know, no matter where you are, no matter where you go, God is with you, God is there, praise God, no matter where you go, He's there. Um, <clears throat> First Chronicles chapter twenty, verse fifteen, it says, He and He said. And he and he said, Hearken ye all Judith and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, thou kingdom, Jasper, the, uh, Jasper that uh, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed, by season for this great multitude, for the battle was not yours, but God. Hallelujah. In Psalm 37 verse 5 says, Commit thy ways unto the Lord. Trust also in Him, not yourself. Trust in the Lord. Trust in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. Proverbs chapter three. Um, Proverbs chapter three, verse five. It says, "Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding." Not some of your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding, but to his understanding. Lean on his word. Lean on the word of God and do what he wants and call you to do. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3, it says, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25 says, The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. That's why trust in God. Don't worry about nothing. Don't worry about uh no storm. Don't worry about nothing. You know, put your trust in God. When you put your trust in God, He will protect you. You know, He He'll keep you safe. Glory be to God. Sometimes it may not be look. It might not look like it sometimes, or your surrounding may not look like it. But you know, just keep your faith. It's not about what it look like. It's about what it is. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Just keep your faith. Praise God. Um, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7 through 8. It says, Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the water, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when he cometh, but her leaf shall be green. Hallelujah. The leaf shall be green. Praise God. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. says, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believes. Luke chapter 11, verse 9 says, And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given, you know, to you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Acts chapter 18, verse 9 and 10 said, Then speak the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision, but not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace, for I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16 said, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hebrews chapter <clears throat> Hebrews chapter ten verse thirty five. 
through 38. It says, Cast not away, therefore your confidence, which have great recompense of reward. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Praise God. In Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 said, Let your conversation be without con convertness, and be content with such thing as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Praise God. But you want to leave him. You know, you want to leave God when things don't work or run, or go your way or work out your way. You want to leave God, but he ain't never left you. He said he will never leave you nor forsake you. First Peter chapter 5 verse 7 says, Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Praise God. Hallelujah. He cares for you. While you running around, going here and going there. You know, everywhere else but except for the right way. You know, he still cares for you. He waiting on you. You know, he already know what you're going to do. He already know what you're going to be. He already know uh, the men or whatever you're thinking. He already knows. But he's waiting on you. And some people are like, no, God waiting on me. No, yeah, you know, God, he said, I'm waiting on God. No, you waiting on God for what? He waiting on you. The only thing you have to do is make that step. Do what you need to do. Open up the book, start there. That's what church. That's what church is. Start in the book, read the book. Praise God. That's church. Glory be to God. That building on is not church. That building is closed down. So who who gonna be there? Ain't nobody <laughs> gonna be there. You know, if it's closed, well, nobody's not gonna be there. So you have to be the church. You the church to open up the word, open up the book, and read for yourself. Have your own church. Glory be to God, you supposed to be the church anyway. There ain't nothing but the building. When the building closed, like what you gonna do? Just stay home, go sleep all day, drink coffee, watch a movie, watch a video, play the uh, uh Xbox, PlayStation all day, or that Wii game or whatever. <laughs> you know what you gonna do? Are well, you gonna get in the world, still continue to uh, get in the world, do the will of God? You know, read, study, read to your kids if you have any. Read. Uh, call somebody up on the phone and have some church. Hallelujah. Talking about the word of God on the phone. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let the weather, don't let the weather, uh, uh, stop you from having church. You know, praise God. You're going to get some bad weather sometime. You know, it could be a test, a test of your faith. You still going to read the word of God. You still going to have church within you. You're going to have church with yourself. You're going to have church, you know, share with others. Get on YouTube, Facebook or something. Talk about the word of God. Do something. Praise God. Is that being number the building? It's like, what if, what if, just imagine, what if all, what, what if all building just wasn't here no more? What if just all building of the uh, house of the Lord would just tore down? What if, what if, what if, what if it just wasn't no more buildings for you to go to? Then what, you, what would you do? I just, just wonder, then what would you do? Then what would the people do? I know what I do. I like keep on continuing to do what I do. We have church outside. Talk about the word of God outside without a building. Everywhere I go, store, gas station, whatever, outside is out. You know, build a circle, go in the parking lot. If I'm going to parking lot, if I'm in the parking lot in my car, <laughs> talking about the road of God, I mean, why not? You know, go in the parking lot. Get out the car. You know, so I was talking in the parking lot, which I have done on YouTube before in the parking lot. Whether really, I'm waiting on somebody or not. You know, I'm in the parking lot talking about the road of God. I wasn't in the building. Praise God, the church is supposed to be in you. Hallelujah. God bless you. I hope everybody's uh, keeping warm, whatever. You know, today the one that's maybe in this uh, weather storm or snow. I mean, it's like, you know, here I mean, I say I'm going to do, do a video. I'm, I'm going to put it on when when this, when the road is not so slippery. I'm going to put it on YouTube and let y'all see when I was driving. Um, I had my little video when I was driving in the, in the snow and everything. It wasn't, it wasn't not that bad like it was last year. It's just slippery, icy now, but... It's cold. It's too <laughs> cold go out there. I can do this thing right here, what I'm doing right now, and I'll stop. But it is cold. It is cold, cold, cold. I mean, it really is icy, icy. You know, praise God. I mean, I thank God that I'm, I mean, I still got light, you know, electricity, you know, it's it just on. I can still do my thing, cook, see, whatever. Praise God, rest. I went to work yesterday, but I thank God, you know, that he gave me the work. 
home, back, you have to work there and back home, say, praise God, and, you know, I serve a good God, awesome God, he loves me, you know, praise God, and I know who I am in Christ Jesus, and I hope you know who you are in Christ Jesus, he will protect and do the same for you when you know who you are in Christ Jesus, you know, just stay up and pray, do the right thing at all times, not just doing the right thing when you around or in front of somebody, just do the right thing all the time, you know, even when you're not around folks, you still continue to do the right thing, praise God. God is good. God is good all the time. Glory be to God. And I thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. They were talking about, um, um, can't think of his name. Wow, my goodness. Talking about everything else. But anyway, it might, it might not be for me to mention talk about me anyway. Talking about the president of South Africa. Y'all know what I'm talking about, uh, <coughs> Nelson Medellia. Mede Mede I think I said his name right. <laughs> I think I said the man's name right. Oh my goodness. Hey, this people ever hear people talking about, you know, about this devil. I mean, he had a good life. Ninety five year old, ninety five year old, you know, has a good life. Anybody that was seventy years old had a good life, you know. Whether you've been locked up, gee, they locked Jesus up too. Jesus was locked up in prison too. You know, I don't know if it was twenty two years, but if Jesus been locked up too, praise God. But um anyway, I mean I just see a God, you know, you forgive. You know, you forgive, you forgive, no matter how long you've been locked up, you still forgive, praise God. I mean, it's a God in that somewhere, because the devil don't want to forgive. The devil want to get you back some kind of way. The devil want to, uh, you know, fight evil with evil, you know. So somebody can stand up and say, I forgive, I forgive them for locking me up for 22 years. I mean, that's a God in it. It's a, it's a God in that, you know, because the devil don't want to forgive you. I know there's a God in that, you know, praise God. You know, God wants you to forgive me anyway. Praise God. No matter who did you wrong, no matter what it is, you know, if that's not the love of God and that, I don't know what it is. I know that's love. You know, love. When you love somebody, you forgive them. No matter what they did to you, what wrong they did to you, you, you forgive. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Praise God. And God bless you today as well as every day. I'm praying for each and every last one of you. In spite of what you're going through, in spite of what you're doing, you know, all I know is my God, my God. He's an awesome God. And he cares and love you. Praise God. Heavenly Father, pray for those who are watching. God bless you today. And God keep you. Pray, Lord, to be with you and keep you and lead you and guide you and protect you and watch over you and guard. I pray he guard his angels around you and protect you in every area of your life. No matter if you got lights or no lights, whether you snow around the area or no snow, I just pray, Lord, just be with you and protect you. And anyhow, anywhere in Jesus' name, stay warm and be strong and be in good courage. And still stand the world, do the will of God, read the book. The church is supposed to be in you, no matter if it's the church clothed today, with a building clothed, you know, but you is that you must be the church. You have to be the church. In a case like this, stuff like this, don't even, I mean, happen sometimes. You must still be the church. It might not be the body in that building, but the building is supposed to be within you. You be that building. You is that church. You is that building. Read the Word of God, whether if it's on YouTube, talk about the Word of God, and not just because that building just closed for temporarily, but just all the time, every day. In Jesus' name, I pray. God bless you and your family in Jesus' name. Now, if you get a demon, every devil trying to stop you, trying to stop you to do what's right, trying to stop you to do the will of God for your life. I pray you tell that devil get behind you and under your feet in Jesus' name. Or you is somebody in Christ Jesus. And you must go forward. You can't go forward by looking behind. You can't go forward by looking at your past. Don't worry about your past. Worry about what's in front of you. You know, be blessed. You know, your blessings up ahead of you in Jesus' name, my prayer. Now, somebody may be sick and may not be feeling good. I don't know. But I just pray, Lord, to touch and heal right where you touch heal and touch right where you painted in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. God bless you and God keep you. In Jesus' name I pray. Glory be to God. I pray no weapon form against you shall prosper in Jesus' name. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. In Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah. God bless you today as well as every day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. I serve awesome God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for every day. Thank you, Lord, for blessing me and keeping me and making a way out of no way for me. Because I know I'm going to be all right, and I know you're going to be all right, too, if you just hold on, keep your faith, don't stop, and don't give up. In Jesus' name, glory be to God. I guess I'll just be back on a little later on. I guess this is this is church for me. Praise God. I'm glad I can have church within me, with, um, with sharing with you and praying. And praise God, the word is powerful. Prayer is powerful. 
You know, sometimes it's good to stay in. Stay in. Stay in the house. Stay warm. Get your rest. You know, sometimes, probably, sometimes people just move too much. They move so much they don't hardly get no rest. Maybe it's the day or the time you need your rest. Be still. Glory be to God. Talk to the Lord, you know. Things happen for a reason. Things just don't happen. You know, enjoy. Enjoy being in the house, you know, with your family. Praise God. You know, read the book. You know, enjoy everything, you know. Whatever you want to make of it out today, but just keep God first. I always be obedient to Him. You know, keep Him first, no matter what. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And God bless you today. And God keep you as well as every day. I know God is good, you know, all the time. Even though I might not be so good all the time. <laughs> I ain't perfect, maybe not. I know I'm not perfect, but hallelujah. You know, but God is good, and He knows my heart. Glory be to God. You know, He know I'm be righteous. He know I am righteous. You know, He know I do my dues. I don't worry about the don't. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for making a way out of no way for me. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I thank you, Jesus. You know, God is so good. He is so good all the time. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Glory be to God. I'm so thankful. I'm so happy. I'm so thankful. And I'm just blessed. Blessed. Ooh, I'm just blessed. And I know you was blessed, too. Yes, you are. God bless you. You is blessed. Glory be to God. Even though you may not think so, you is blessed. Glory be to God. You is blessed. And I hope you know so. Glory be to God. So until next time, remember, God love you, so do I. Until next time, you know, God bless you and your family. In Jesus' name, take care. Remember, God love you, so do I. Take care until next time. If God said the same.